What up, my fellow NBA lovers? This is your guy, Marcellus Ease. You know, Clutch Sports is sort of like an industry disruptor. Sort of like how Amazon disrupted retail, Uber, travel, Airbnb, the hotel service. It kind of gives consumers a new, innovative way of doing things. And with Clutch Sports, they kind of offer NBA players the same options. They're giving guys different routes to take outside of going to the NCAA after high school. They're providing different services for players, maybe on a more personal level due to whatever their situation is that other agencies before them weren't doing. So you kind of see the correlation between the two. The only thing with the NBA right now, they kind of have a tricky situation with clutch sports. The only thing with the NBA right now, they kind of have a tricky situation with clutch sports in which LeBron James is the figurehead of the league and he does hold a lot of power. And clutch sports is directed by one of his best friends. And with the league tampering rules, things can get really tricky. Now, Nerons Noel in 2018 did have a nice deal offered from the Mavs. He was told to decline it because he would get better offers and as we've seen the years go by, he pretty much finally landed a deal with the Knicks, nowhere near the deal he was offered from the Mavericks in 2011. They're going to touch base in a situation, and every once in a while, I'll check in. Skip, I don't really think there's any merit to this. Uh, it seems... I don't really think there's any merit to this. Uh, it seems to me that this lawsuit came after Rich Paul filed a grievance with the player. Million a season after that. All right, Shannon, your reaction to this? Skip, I don't really think there's any merit to this. Uh, it seems to me that this lawsuit came after Rich Paul filed a grievance with the Players Association saying that Nerlens Noel owes him compensation for the contract that he negotiated with the Knicks last year. <laughs> Yo, Rich Paul wants his 4%. He don't fuck around with the money. And low-key, a lot of teams, quiet is kept, man. They're scared of Rich Paul because he, he's going to get the players his, their money. And a lot of teams, quiet is kept. They're, they're scared of Rich Paul because he really comes for these teams' neck. He really wants the players paid. My thing is, okay, it says that he... Happy Waters was his contract was his agent when he turned that money down. He said Rich advised him. Rich is not your agent. Why are you listening to someone that's not your agent? My th another thing. Okay, Rich became your agent in I think 20, late 2017. Yes. 2018, mm -hmm. 2019, 2020. Nothing. Yep. All of a sudden, Rich Paul says, I want my money for the compensation. I want my commission for the contract that I negotiated with the Knicks. And now all of a sudden, this lawsuit. Yep. Skip, this is what yeah, I find man. is very ironic also. We still don't know who Dennis Schroeder's agent is. <laughs> Dennis Schroeder turned down four years, 84 million. We don't know who the agent is. Now, this is a great point brought up by Shannon because this sounds like, to me, the old players, a.k.a. the old agencies that represent the players, they're kind of colluding to get rid of clutch sports because they clearly are a market disruptor. And best believe a couple months back, a couple of agents got together and hit up some of their buddies at The Athletic and let out and pretty much let off some steam of what they thought Clutch Sports was. Nerlens Noel's turned down this money. Rich Paul isn't his agent. Now Rich Paul's name is getting drugged through the mud for something somebody else did because it's Rich Paul. Mm -hmm. Also, Nerlens Noel, when you turned that one, when you turned that deal down and you took a one-year deal, did you tell the people what happened after that? Oh, yeah, I got hurt. You did. You're not Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant can get hurt and get a max deal. Yep. Kawhi Leonard can get hurt and get a max deal. Yep. You're not it. And I want to know the agent that's ever told Nerlens Noel, you're a $100 million player. Bruh, you got an injury history. You remember how you fell in the draft because of why, Skip? He tore his ACL in college. Mm. If I have an injury history, I'm not leaving any money. I'm taking that money. Why would I roll the dice knowing my history? Plus, also, you know, these teams talk also. Does he have any other issues? These teams do talk because Bleacher Report had confirmed the Rockets were trying to reach out to Chris Paul. 
Same thing for the 76ers. Which, ironically enough, they were pretty much a rival for LeBron James while he was in the Eastern Conference in that final year. This is before they made that trade to get Jimmy Butler also on that team that following season. Also, the Clippers were also interested. All these things are coming out. You can only take it with a grain of salt because a lot of these agents have relationships with these teams. And remember in 2010 when LeBron James, the decision, that whole free agency class, it was said that basically that whole class was controlled by CAA agency. I remember that was floating around a lot. But back then, you know, you didn't really see the behind the scenes as much. And when Clutch Sports started coming about, you started to see, and when I say you, I mean the fan base started to see overtly how some of these agencies pretty much control some of these teams. Is there anything else? Meeting time, late, the way you conduct yourself, the way you do things. I just find it just very ironic is that all of a sudden now, four years... Rich Paul has been his agent, Skip, since late 2020, since late 2017, up until now. Mm-hmm. And no lawsuit was filed. All of a sudden, Rich files a grievance against he, him. He to get filed his... a grievance. You owe me 200000 Now, not, not $58 million. Right. You owe me 200000 It wasn't commission. until the man said, I want my money. Mm-hmm. You said, well, I'm filing against you because you cost me $58 million. Mm-hmm. If he cost you $58 million in 2021, he cost you that in 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020. It wasn't until that man requested his money. So I don't think he has legs to stand on because Rich Paul wasn't his agent. But Harry the kicker, Skip. He definitely doesn't have legs to stand on, but look at what team he plays for. He plays for a team with nothing but CAA affiliation, World Wide West, Leon Rose, the coaching staff. That whole Knicks team is basically a CAA agency. And Clutch Sports is a market disruptor. They're getting guys deals outside of the NBA. Pretty much, they're getting kids deals fresh out of high school, curving the NCAA. They're getting them jobs at Nike, Reebok, etc. They're giving them multiple options, which is pretty innovative, especially with that player Beasley that's out in OKC. They got him a deal to work with a shoe company for a million dollars. And then basically, they got him practicing either in the G League or some sort of league where he can get prepared to get drafted, which end up happening. So he not only he got drafted and he got paid. So Clutch Sports is very innovative, and they're also holding these sessions, these, these training camp sessions for guys that are about to get drafted to boost their stock. They got celebrities showing up. They're changing the game, and a lot of the old players, they're, they're pretty much jealous. The agent works at the behest of the player. I had a contract skip in 1992. Mm -hmm. Me and my agent, we going back and forth. The Olympics going on, so I wasn't in no hurry to go to training camp, Skip. I wouldn't watch the Olympics in Barcelona. Now, the behest of the player. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't really say they're... And a lot of the agencies feel threatened. And once again, we see this play out with a lot of businesses like Airbnb. We've seen the hotel industry try to, you know, lobby against them. Any new innovative industry, any new innovative company that comes about that tries to take up market share, same thing happened to Uber. We've seen the old realm, the old industries, the old organizations. They come and they try to lobby against them. And this is the old sports agencies' ways of just trying to release unusual tactics through the media to try to and this is the old sports agencies trying to go through the media to try to sour the name of clutch sports if he calls you 58 million in 2021 he calls you that in 2017 2018 2019 2020 it wasn't until that man requested his money. Yep. So I don't think he has legs to stand on yep. because Rich Paul wasn't his agent. But here's the kicker skip the agent works at the behest yep. of the player. I had a contract skip in 1992. Mm-hmm. Yep. Me and my agent, we going back and forth. The Olympics going on, so I wasn't in no hurry to go to training camp, Skip. Okay. I wouldn't watch the Olympics in Barcelona. Yep. Now, the agent says, well, Shannon, this is what I think we can get. I told him. I said, now, look, 
If they go 15 more thousand, because Skip, I had gotten more money. I was making 73,000. They was already up over 200,000. I said, if they go 15 more thousand, I'm going. Mm -hmm. He's like, well, Shannon, I think we can get them up to over 200. I said, okay. He told me the number for the two years, Skip. I show up, because they already got my stuff in my locker. Skip, I show up the next day in training camp, mm -hmm. ready to practice. They say, what are you doing? I said, I'm ready. To, I'm getting ready to practice. They say, Shannon, you haven't signed the contract yet. Mm. You can't practice until you sign the contract. I don't care what that agent said. Yep. You work for me. <sighs> I showed up. The agent worked for you, Norlis Noel. You turned that down. Yep. Ain't no agent did that. You. Look, we have all gotten bad advice from previous agents. Yes. That have cost us, that, that did cost us yes. money at that point yes. in our careers. Yes. And what are those previous agencies, Skip is, and what are those previous agencies Skip is talking about? I know in, in his days, there was no clutch sports. Best believe a lot of these previous agencies, they've messed up a lot too. And they have plenty of years to mess up. I mean, you could look at stretching back from the last 40 years. Can you imagine how many fuck ups happened since then? I mean, come on. You think Clutch Sports with the few clients that they had, how long they've been around only for a few years, they're not going to have a few hiccups here and there? I know what it feels like. I do too, because I fired one. Okay, there you go. <laughs> but I still had to pay him for the year that he negotiated the contract. Now, that I happens too. Skip, I just can't say, well, I, since I fired you, I gotta, I'm going to stop paying you. I have done similarly. <laughs> So I'm no legal eagle. I don't know exactly what will fly and what won't in court, but I'm with you. My gut feeling is this will not stand up in court. Just to be clear about this, Nerlens Noel says that he met Rich Paul at a birthday party for Ben Simmons out here in L.A. Correct. While he was in the process of thinking about what had been offered to him from the Dallas Mavericks, right. which was four years and 70 million. That's almost 18 million a year. That's that's a pretty good yes. deal. Yes. Right? Yes. And that's also from a franchise that struggles to get free agents. So that deal might have been overinflated a bit because Mark Cuban, he always struggles to get guys to go there. So Nerlens Noel might have really lost on an opportunity there. He claims in the lawsuit that Rich's advice was, no, you're worth more than that, so you need to just go ahead and accept the one-year sort of qualifying offer so you can get through one year at, what was it, $4.1 million. Who would do that? Okay, well, that's what he says Rich advised him to do, and I have no idea because that's one man's word versus another man's word, right? And that's just not going to hold up in court. You need the proof. And he says that's what he did. That was the strategy that Rich advised him to take. And then he went ahead and signed with Rich at some point in that yeah, process. Right. And you know the rest of the story. He hurts his thumb. He misses 42 games. And he hits rock bottom. And it is, it, it's a sad story. He shrewded himself. Yes. Basically what happened. How much of that is Rich's fault? I, I don't know. Here's the problem that Rich and LeBron have faced from the very start. The deeper issue here, the subtext of all this, is the appearance, just the appearance of conflict, of impropriety, because also in the lawsuit, he is suggesting, as Nerlens Noel, that he says that he later learned that representatives from the Houston Rockets and Los Angeles Clippers wanted to discuss opportunities with Rich Paul, but they could not make contact with him during this free agent pop right. process. And fuck the sources, Brett Brown put his name on it. Brett Brown from the 76ers had actually made that statement. So his name is actually on that report. <laughs> okay, so then you leap to the conclusion, and I'm leaping here, that aha, because LeBron and Rich are joined at the hip, basically, because LeBron started all this and had to fund it from the start and put Rich on the map. And listen, Rich is really good at what yes. he does. He has proven again and again and again. And he definitely is good at what he does. But if you look at that 2018 season, because them not... And he, and he is good at what he does. But if you look at that Philadelphia 2018 season, they went after Al Horford because they couldn't get Nerlens Noel. And they were a major threat to LeBron in that Eastern Conference. This is where the conflict comes into play. And the league is in a really great area with this clutch sports thing.
And especially, I thought it was an overreach by Rich Paul and LeBron and Clutch Sports with the Anthony Davis situation. That pretty much put them on the radar. Because for Anthony Davis to be in a contract with the New Orleans Pelicans, remember, he was in contract. It's not like he was going to become a free agent. He was in a contract and just stopped playing for the team and requested a trade only to the Lakers. And that's right after signing to Clutch. That is a you know that is a really tricky situation for the league. I mean, they're lucky that LeBron James is the figurehead of the league. He is really good. Mm-hmm. He he is not a just a product of LeBron James because he is his right. own man. Right. He is making his own way, but he needed a jump start. He needed the seed money from LeBron. LeBron to- gave three guys opportunity. Yeah. And just like any other politicians, who they whoever. And just like most politicians, whoever they take the money from, they pretty much owe them a favor. Why do you think all these corporations are giving money to both Democrats and Republicans through election time periods? So make no mistake about that. Rich, Maverick, and uh, Randy. Randy is the chief of staff. He handles LeBron's day-to-day operations. And and Maverick, yes, Maverick is an absolute dynamo on Wall Street and in Hollywood. Correct. Okay, so but he... That they had to make it on their own right. after he opened the doors yes, for yes, all three yes, of them. Yes. Okay, got it. So I'm taking nothing away from Rich Paul, but the appearance of conflict is always going to hang over LeBron and Rich because a lot of clutch clients come to the Lakers. Right. So it looks like, well, is Rich just sending them to, to help LeBron? And was he not returning the calls of the Rockets and Clippers in the Western Conference to protect LeBron from Nerland? I don't think well, well, that that, that suggests. Well, that's in 2018, Skip. LeBron James, uh, he was still in Cleveland by then. But you're also going to have to look at that Marcus Morris situation or Markeith Morris situation, how it played out in San Antonio because he was signed to clutch and he ended up firing uh, Rich Paul. Uh, Apparently, the Clippers wanted to give him that money and then they couldn't get a deal worked out and he ended up settling for San Antonio. But then he ended up reneging on San Antonio and going to the Knicks. So that's how that happened. So Mark. So Marcus Morris. So Markeith Morris ended up firing Rich Paul and Clutch Sports. That LeBron was afraid of Nerlens Noel. That's really? probably a stretch. Exactly. Okay, I got it. But Skip, what agent mm-hmm. would tell a player, "You got seventeen point eight million on the table. Mm-hmm. We're gonna scrap that." And go f- and go one year for mm-hmm. less than five, knowing anything can happen. A rolled ankle, broken leg, ACL. A- also, he's collecting on that 4% fee. Let's put that in mind. That's less money because you're collecting a percentage of that contract. So why the hell would you opt out for that? Um, he leaves thumb. Yeah. Anything can happen. Who does that? No, Skip, okay, Kevin yep. Durant, one of these top-tier, Joel Embiid, one of these top-tier guys, okay, you want to roll the dice, but you, that's what you're doing, Skip. You're betting on yourself. But every betting on yourself story is not a success story. Yep, okay. And so we saw that with Schroeder. We saw a guy that rolled the dice on himself and rolled snake eyes. He did. Okay, Norlis Noel, bruh, you can't, after someone files a grievance against you, yep. all of a sudden look back. Rich Paul wasn't your agent. Even if he had given you advice, your agent was Happy Waters. Mm-hmm. W- Walters. Walters, yeah, excuse yeah, me. Yeah. That's your agent. Yeah. Okay. You're right. And at least Nerlens lived to tell about it because he got his deal from the, the right. Knicks right now. Right. So it's three years, what is it, $27.7 million. It's not that deal that was left on the table. The, you're never going to make that up. At least, at least. Especially in that, in that tax, man. <laughs> New York City, man, that tax rate is insane. I mean, he could have got that deal in Dallas and not pay no state income tax on that. He's back in business, right? right? Yeah, because he got one year last. I think he signed for one year. Last year was one mm-hmm. year, ten million. Yeah. So hence the the the, the I, I guess what five percent of that, whatever, whatever, whatever the case may be. Yep. It was Rich Paul filed a grievance, mm-hmm. and then for whatever reason, Nerlens Noel signed his agreement. And it, 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 he also, I was reading about it, says, well, he only showed preferential treatment to the high-profile client. That is correct. Well, welcome to the world of business. That is what correct. do you think CAA does? Yeah. What do you think Elite does? What do you think Philip Morris does? Yeah, yeah, they all do it. I mean, especially with that 4%, you know, standard fee. Or just overall, I don't know what's the standard fee, but it's, it's hovering around. Yeah, they all do. Especially collecting a fee 
on the total amount of the contracts. No one's Noel has to expect that. Uh, bruh, every agent don't get the same treatment as a Dwayne Johnson or a Tom Cruise or a Denzel or a Samuel Jackson. You think... Uh, uh, C-list uh, 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 actors and actresses mm -hmm. get the same as yep. Scarlett Johansson? Really? You believe that? Mm -hmm. Or Denzel? That's what you think in Norris Noel. If you want your calls returned quicker, you should have stayed with Happy Walters. Thank you. Right? Skip, that was the whole thing. Skip, when I was coming out, I was a seven-round draft pick. Mm -hmm. Man, ain't no agent want no 5% or no 22000 what I got mm -hmm. to sign. They want 5% of $1.7